If Apple created a toaster, it would look pretty close to that. Willing to bet, yeah. What if Apple created a stapler? Know that specific look in mid-journey you're chasing for a specific image? The one that just gets it, but when you try again, mid-journey gives you something totally different? That's where mood boards come in. They let you walk in a style, a mood, an overall look, and then recreate it over and over without wasting time tweaking prompts. Upload some reference images and Midjourney basically learns your aesthetic so you can easily reproduce it. In this video, I'll show you exactly how mood boards work, how to set them up, examples of mood boards that I've created that you can reproduce, and more. So without further ado, pop a nasty TV dinner into your dirty microwave, chow down, nom nom nom, and let's party. So what is a mood board? Let's start with that. The quick definition of a mood board really is it's a collection of reference images that guide a specific style. It's a little bit different than the style reference in Mid Journey, and instead, it's something that will be a stronger influence on the image that you're trying to create, and it's less of just a style, it's more of a composition, a mood, a look, a style, it's everything combined into an overall high-level look. That's what a mood board is versus a style. Now, the main benefit here with a lot of things in AI is gonna be speed and consistency. And I'm gonna get into that and you're gonna to wanna to stick around to see it because I'm gonna show you how you can speed things up really quickly by using mood boards. Also, mood boards were just released about a month ago and there really isn't that much information out there on mood boards yet in Mid Journey. So I figured I had to make this video to satisfy my Mid Journey audience because you know who you are and I have quite a few of you. So I figured I needed to party again with some Mid Journey. Now I'll show you how to create a mood board. So you wanna come right over here to the left hand side of Mid Journey. You'll see a tab here that's relatively new. Again, just released about a month ago called Mood Boards. You click on that and then you'll see all of your mood boards. At the moment, I have three of them. I'm gonna go through all three of them a little bit further down in this video. But to make a new one, all you have to do is click new mood board. And from there, you're gonna to wanna to name it something else. So we're gonna call it the sick mood board. Okay. And from there, you can add images from anywhere. So. At first glance, you're probably going to be thinking, all right, so these are all just mid-journey images that I add, right? I just add things from mid-journey and that's my mood board. No, no, you can add images from anywhere, okay? So you can copy paste into the mood board. You can drag and drop into the mood board. You can add an image from your mid-journey gallery in the mood board right here. You can add images from a link from around the web. It can be any image that you want into the mood board. So get creative and don't hold back. And by the way, there's a limit of 100 images per mood board, but if you get to 100 images in a mood board, there's something wrong with you. So you might need to see a doctor if you get that many images in there. You don't need that many. Once you drag and drop an image in here, and first what I'll do is I'll add one from the gallery here. So let's add this one and this one. And it might take you a second to see the images appear in your mood board. So just give it a few seconds. Sometimes you gotta wait for it to load, no big deal. So you can see both images in here on my mood board. Let's just say I wanted this to be my robot plane mood board or whatever. Okay, I would change the name of it up here. And you can do a couple different things here. So you can set it as your default personalization style if you wanted to, and I'll show you that drop down menu in a second or you can just click one button right here to use it in a prompt and from there as you can see each mood board is going to have its own code but don't be too intimidated by it it's not a big deal so you can use it this way or you can use it in the drop down which i'll show you in a second but for now let's say we want another robot so robot flying a plane while it's crashing. Okay, so it's gonna have this overall look and feel and style. And we have this personalized code. And let's just leave everything else the way that it is. And as you can see, that is a very similar style 
to the Mid Journey mood board that we created for this. And this was a very, very simple prompt. I mean, what, six, seven words, something like that. And as you can see, it's, it's more than just the style. It's the overall look. And this did a real nice job. And as you can see, the stylized value I set as 500. Typically with the stylized value, I like to be a little bit cautious with it. But when you're using a mood board, the stylized value, you can go all the way up to a thousand if you want. That's really in this case, just how much of that aesthetic do you want in your image? So I've messed with it and I've set it to a thousand and sometimes that works really well. Might take some experimentation, but for the sake of it, let's set this to a thousand and I'll show you guys what I mean. There you go guys. And as you can see, this is our 1000 stylized value for our sick mood board. And I can give you a quick comparison. Now go back to mood board here. And as you can see, it just looks like they kind of go together. That's what we're trying to get here. They kind of go together. Now there's another way that you can select your mood board and I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's say we did a robot flying plane while it's crashing. You can actually go right here, select P, make sure P is on and then select your mood board right here. So you just select that. And at that point, you wouldn't even need that code that we had with those first ones. Remember when we clicked that button to get the code in there? Now you don't even need the code if you don't want to go back to the mood board to get the code in there. So just click that drop down and you're good. But again, make sure that P is highlighted for that to happen. Now I'm going to show you guys three mood boards that I've created that you guys can run with as use cases for your own benefits. So this first one is runtheprompts.com, which you should definitely check out. You'll like it if you like this video. All kinds of mid-journey resources in there and prompts. But I'm using this mid, this mid-journey mood board now as my hero image creator. So what I did is I went through my website and I found the images for all of the blog posts that I liked the best. The ones that I thought really capture the look and feel of the run the prompts posts the best it, it possibly could. So this is basically like my best of collection, if you will, of uh, images for run the prompts. So I ended up using this to generate the image for my most recent article. And I'll show you that in a second. So this image right here was made with a mood board. And as you can see, that aesthetic is captured nicely from these sample of images. So it worked out real well. Next mood board is going to be the Apple mood board. So what I did is I went to Apple's website. I went to Google search and I found images that captured the product photography vibe that Apple gives off. And then I used that mood board. And don't worry, if you're wondering why this applies to you, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. I used that mood board to create some new Apple stuff. So I wanted to see what would it look like if Apple created smart glasses? What would that ad look like? It's a lot like that, doesn't it? Pretty accurate. What if Apple created a toaster? If Apple created a toaster, it would look pretty close to that. Willing to bet ya. What if Apple created a stapler? Okay. Now with these, the stylized value was 900. Again, you can get that stylized high if you want, and it might work real well because it did with this. So we're going to go back to these mood boards and we're going to go to the penthouse mood board. So one of my favorite use cases of AI really, and also specifically mid journey is making dream penthouses with cool LED lighting and cool effects and pools and hot tubs. And it's just a really cool way to envision and dream of your future. You know what I mean? So we have the, the penthouse mood board and I can show you some things I made with that. Let's go eight. So penthouse mood board, for example, and that looks pretty good, right? Again, more penthouses, guys, this is incredible, right? These are incredible penthouses and I got it real easily. Look at this really small prompt to get this penthouse. So you might be wondering, well, how does this apply to me? So 
let's say you're a marketer or you have your own website or you have a YouTube channel or you have social media that you have to post on a regular basis, anything where you have a specific image look that you need to reproduce over and over and over again, you can create a mood board and then it makes it much quicker and easier to reproduce that look. Okay, I cannot stress this enough. And it can be something as random, but also fun, like the penthouse images. So if there's something that you like to create a lot that's really fun, put that into a mood board so you can do it over and over much easier. And the result is going to be more tailored to what you would typically want to see. Now let's get into some pro tips. So number one is use variety in a smart way. So the more variety you put into your mood board in terms of various images with different looks and feels and colors, the more variety you're going to get in your output when you use the mood board to create a new image. So keep that in mind. If you want it honed in to on, on a very, very specific look, then don't go crazy adding a bunch of different images in different styles. Really make sure you're nailing that down in the board. Next pro tip is don't go crazy on the prompts. You can keep the prompts simple. You saw some of these prompts. If you have the board connected to the prompt, you can keep it simple and it should give you the type of result that you want. So when you do use a prompt with a mood board, you're gonna want to describe your subject and basically forget about describing the style because the style is already in the mood board. So you don't want to overwhelm mid journey with too much data. It gets mad and you don't want it to get mad. Another tip is to iterate. So if you use, let's say you use this mood board and you generate an image from it that you really like, you can go back into it and add the images you like that you made from this into the mood board. So as you go, you just fill it up with a lot of really, really good images that you like, and you're giving Midjourney more and more data to use. Now, of course, this contradicts a little bit what I just said, but as long as you're okay with a little bit more variety in your outputs, if it's the same look, then you're good. Also, when you add an image to a board, the code may change. So the code for your mood board at the top of Midjourney that I showed you it might change. So keep that in mind. If you're sharing a code or you copy and paste it somewhere, then that code may apply to the board you created before you added those new images. Before you guys leave, if you got any amount of value from this video, definitely give me a like, comment, and share this post. And be sure to subscribe because if you haven't, then you are a loser and you know that. So Use those mid-journey mood boards to your advantage in your workflow. Save some time, save some energy. That's why I'm here, guys. I want to make your life easier. So if you want your life to be easier with AI, you got to hit that subscribe button so you can always stay up to date with more and more videos totally for free. You can always change your mind. You know how it is. We all like to say the same things when we make videos. You've heard this a million times, but it really does make a difference. So be sure to hit those buttons. And until next time, Remember to run the prompts and prompt the planet.